Hi, everyone. It's Alfred. And I've recently just kind of got a tooth for Dishonored. Um, I don't think I'm going to do a full LP of it. Not yet, at least. It's definitely a game that I think could deserve one, but in lieu of that, I'll just be reading the wiki. Um, this is the Dishonored wiki, dishonored.fandom.com. This is the official wiki page for Dishonored. I'm going to read it softly to help you sleep or study or focus on something else. But who really knows? Dishonored is a first-person stealth action video game developed by Arcane Studios and published by Bethesda Softworks. It was released from October 9th to October 12th, 2012 for Microsoft Windows, PlayStation 3, and Xbox 360. Well, it actually doesn't say and Xbox 360. It just says Windows, PS3, Xbox 360. Harvey Smith, known for his involvement in the Deus Ex series, and Raphael Colantonio, founder of Arcane Studios and contributor to such games as Arct Fatalis and Dark Messiah of Might and Magic, are the lead creative designers for Dishonored. A sequel, Dishonored 2, was announced during Bethesda Studios, Bethesda Softworks, rather, E3 Showcase on June 14th, 2015. It was released on Skyrim Day 2016. Revenge solves everything. Marketing tagline. Set in the plague-ravaged city of Dunwall, Dishonored follows the story of Koro Atano, the last bodyguard to the Empress Jessamine Caldwin. Framed for her murder and abduction of her daughter Emily, Koro is falsely imprisoned by the Empress's royal spymaster and usurper, Hiram Burroughs. Six months later, on the eve of his execution, Koro escapes confinement with the help of a shadowy group of loyalists who seek to eliminate those involved in the assassination of the Empress and restore Emily to the throne. He is further assisted by an enigmatic god called the Outsider, who grants him supernatural abilities for reasons equally mysterious. Corvo takes on the role of a feared and infamous assassin as he pursues members of the coup one by one. But whether he is out for justice or revenge is another question. Dishonored features multiple endings, which are dependent on Corvo's actions and player choice throughout the course of the game. The focus of Dishonored is on affecting the world and the, nat- the narrative primarily through Corvo's actions, how he accomplishes each of his missions. Koro has extensive variety of weapons at his disposal, as well as supernatural abilities. Assassination kills fill up an adrenaline gauge, and once it is full, players can increase his combat prowess. At the same time, Corvo can approach any mission with stealth in mind, sneaking through the environment without being detected. Each of the world's environments focus on verticality, enabling the player to experience the entirety of a level from sewer systems to w- and waterways to rooftops. Players can use Corvo's free-running expertise to scale buildings, slide on other obstacles, and sprint across platforms, with certain supernatural abilities further augmenting his movement. Many areas are open to exploration. Hidden rewards and experience wait for more adventurers to find. Chaos. Dishonored features a chaos system that tracks the world's the game's world state, and is directly affected by Corvo's choices during his missions. The more destructive his actions, the more chaotic the world becomes. Some actions are less chaotic, such as killing a guard and hiding his body in a dumpster, whereas raising an alarm or killing a civilian in broad daylight provokes a greater response. The opposite is also true, and there are side missions which, if executed properly, will lower existing chaos. Changes in chaos level may result in in-game adjustments, such as altered rat populations or slight differences in dialogue. Notable consequences may also result, such as more guards appearing on patrols or characters changing the way they interact with Corvo. When chaos reaches critical levels, bedlam ensues. NPCs begin to attack each other. Rats swarm the area. And And the world through which Corvo moves becomes nightmarish. How chaotically a player decides to play is entirely voluntary. Players can be extremely disruptive, sowing death and destruction, or take a subtle approach, even completing the game without killing anyone. Chaos is a measure of stability rather than morality, meant to highlight the plight of the crumbling city in which Dishonored takes place. Just for reference, the non-lethal playthrough of Dishonored, it's much worse than the lethal one. Going partially lethal and just killing the assassination targets is, in my opinion, the most humanitarian way to play the game. Artificial Intelligence Rafael Colon Antonio has described the AI of Dishonored as analog AI, meaning AI personalities are structured along a spectrum instead of on-off states and adapt to the environment. 
For example, two conversing guards may have narrower vision cones and duller hearing than their patrolling counterparts, and are therefore less likely to notice Corvo than those on patrol. Light, mental state, ambient noise, and other elements all affect how the AI reacts. Viktor Antonov, oh, I love him by the way, Viktor Antonov's so cool. Viktor Antonov, the game's visual design director, is best known for his work in Half-Life 2, designing much of the architecture and technology present in City 17. Hey, another great game with great art. Antonov has noted he wanted Dunwall to have a Lovecraftian feel, and drew some inspiration from Half-Life 2 with the request of the production team. According to Antonov, Dishonored derives its art style from books and artwork, as opposed to video games and film. This emerges in the game's stylized oil painting design. I think that Dishonored today looks a little ugly, but even still, it has an art style, which instead of being that almost realistic, kind of crappy 2012 era of realistic video games, is much better. Gray with an art style is much better than brown and sort of realistic. It's one of the reasons that I thought Dishonored was such a breath of fresh air. The game's overall design was influenced by the now-defunct Looking Glass Studios, the company of where many of the game's developers, including Smith, began their careers. The game's art director, as opposed to visual design director, is Sebastian Mitten, possibly Mitton, and that might also be Sebastian. The world of Dishonored consists almost entirely of water, aside from the Isles, a group of islands in the northwest region of the world. There's also the Pendician Continent, a giant landmass southeast of the Isles. I mean, if you're in the northwest region of the world, nearly everything is southeast. Corvo's tale takes place in Dunwall, the capital city of Gristol. The central hub to which he continually returns to in missions is known as the Hound Pits Pub, a drinking establishment in a quarantine district. Harvey Smith describes the aesthetic of Dishonored as retro-futuristic industrial, combining influences such as 17th century England, modern Orwellian dystopia, and anachronistic technology. This presents itself as spindled armatures, walls of light, and buggy-like vehicles. The environment is intended to be a storied backscape and an interactive canvas, rather than a bank stage on which the action takes place. Stately monuments dot the city, while graffiti splashes red-bricked buildings. Prostitutes canvas neighborhoods where overturned dumpsters litter the street, and corpses wait to be thrown into the sea. The world of Dishonored telegraphs pieces of information about the world of the player, while also allowing them to interact with it in a meaningful, logical manner. Downloadable content. Dishonored has four primary DLC packs, each of them with different themes and content. Dunwall City Trials contains mission-based minigames based on the world of Dishonored. Voidwalker's Arsenal contains all in-game bonuses originally given out with pre-ordered copies of the game. The Knife of Dunwall and the Brigmore Witches follow the story of Dowd, antagonist and nemesis to Corvo, who must solve a mystery given to him by the outsider before his time and the Empire's runs out. I love Dowd. As a villain, he's completely radical. And at one point, he says the dopest thing to you that a villain can say. He says, I haven't even lied to you. Which is true. He's one of the few NPCs in the game that does not lie to you and does not give you half-truths. Even the outsider gives you kind of vague, fey, cryptic bullshit. Dowd does not. He's just straight up. I really like that about him. It's probably why he was made a playable character. Because he's that cool. Also, he is the Dante to Corvo's Virgil. Special editions. Four downloadable packs. The Acrobatic Killer Pack, the Arcane Assassin Pack, the Backstreet Butcher Pack, and the Shadow Rat Pack were offered with pre-orders of Dishonored at specific retailers in the U.S. Various bonuses such as a metal tin for the game, a whale oil USB lamp, and the Dishonored Tarot Deck were also included. An updated version of the Tarot Deck, including... Art from the DLC was also offered with pre-orders of Game of the Year Edition at GameStop and EB Games Canada. Dishonored Game of the Year Edition was released on October 7, 2013, about a year afterwards, for PC in October 8th for PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360. In addition to the original game, this edition includes all the downloadable content. As of June 13th, the Game of the Year Edition on Steam was simply renamed Definitive Edition, despite not featuring uh, any improvements over the original PC version. A remastered version of the game titled Dishonored Definitive Edition was announced on June 14, 2015, containing Dishonored and its DLC with enhanced graphics for the latest console systems. It was released for PlayStation 4 and Xbox One on August 25, 2015 in North America and August 28, 2015 in Europe. 
The current Definitive Edition, available on Steam, does not feature any changes compared to the original PC version of the games and DLC. It is also sold with Dishonored 2. Awards. I will actually skip through this because it's a lot of number one game of the year, yada yada, etc. Reception. Dishonored Review received universal acclaim reviews and was tagged as a must-play on Metacritic, getting a meta score of 91 out of 100 on PC based on 29 reviews, 89 out of 100 on PS3 on 35 reviews, and 80 out of 100 on Xbox 360 based on 58 reviews. On whattoplay.com, it receives an aggregate score, aggregate score of 9.15 on PC based on 16 critics and 39,000 plus gamer ratings. 8.91 on PS3 based on 17, and 8.94 on Xbox 360. Trivia. When Arcane Studios started working on Bethesda, working for Bethesda, Harvey Smith and Raphael Cola Antonio were first proposed to work on an old ninja game concept set in feudal Japan. It featured magic powers, weapons, and poison darts within the story of an apprentice sent to avenge his master. Arcane's creative directors changed the setting to London in 1966, the last year of the plague, and the year of the Great Fire of London. Art director Sebastien Meton sketched several visuals of the city, such as the old London Bridge. Eventually, that became that setting moved to more of a Victorian inspiration of London between the 1830s and 1880s. That town itself became fictitious, so the developers could expand its setting without being hindered by historical and geographical accuracy. The German version of the game is the only one to feature a longer title, Dishonored, The Mask des Zorns meaning the Mask of Wrath. I will now read Corvo's Wikipedia article. Corvo Itano is the protagonist of Dishonored, and one of the two playable protagonists of Dishonored 2. Previously the royal protector and secret paramour to Empress Jessamine Caldwin, Corvo is framed for the Empress's assassination, stripped of his title and imprisoned by the usurper to the throne of the Empire, Lord Regent Hiram Burroughs. Corvo escapes and becomes a vigilante assassin for the Loyalist Conspiracy, using powers granted to him by the Outsider to eliminate Burroughs' confederates, clear his name, avenge the Empress's death, and restore their abducted daughter Emily to the throne. In Dishonored 2, he serves as Empress's, Empress Emily's royal protector and spymaster. During his daughter's reign, he once again finds himself against a usurper in Delilah Copperspoon. Either Corvo or Emily sets out to confront Delilah and her cohorts in order to reclaim the throne. He's 39 in Dishonored, and 54 in Dishonored 2. He's from Sarkonos, and his location is various. Korvotano was born into the lower-class family in the Batista mining district of Karnaka on the 25th day of the month of Nets in 1789. Corvo used to live happily, often wandering through the more rural parts of the city until his, farm, his father, a lumber worker, was killed in a workplace accident. He then grew up with his elders, elder sister, Beatrice, fighting in the streets until she moved to Morle, and the family subsequently lost all contact with her. At the age of 16, Corvo won the Blade Verbena, an annual sword duel festival, which earned him an early officer ranking in the Grand Zirconian Guard. During his time as a soldier, Corvo was involved in conflicts against several organized crime groups, including rogue city-states and pirate bands on the island chain east from Sarkonos. Eventually, after two years of service, Theodanus Abel, the Duke of Sarkonos, was highly impressed by his skill, and on the 25th day of the month of rain, Corvo was sent to Dunwall to serve the Emperor Euhorn Colwyn as an M diplomatic gift. On his last night in Karnaka, he danced and drank till dawn, celebrating his new position and skills of swordmen that had given it to him. A few months after his departure to Dunwall, Corvo learned about the passing of his mother Paloma, a few weeks after he had left Karnaka. A year later, Corvo was chosen to serve as the royal protector to the emperor's daughter, Jessamine Caldwin, which in the process gave him a higher social standing. Corvo loyally served Jessamine as his personal bodyguard, courier, and spy. Corvo and Jessamine secretly became lovers in 1823. However, their lasting closeness did not, no, did not go unnoticed by the general public and rumors to that effect circulated throughout Dunwall. While several people, including Lydia Brooklane, Trevor Pendleton, and Anton Sokolov, mentioned the affair to Corvo, it's never publicly acknowledged. Four years later, Emily was born from their relationship, 
although her paternal parentage was initially kept a secret. Despite the situation, Corvo maintained a strong bond with his daughter and often publicly interacted with her in a fam- familiar and affectionate manner. Emily's behavior towards Corvo suggests she sees him as a father figure and often asks to be taught by him. Corvo is described as being mysterious and quiet, with Walter Higgins and Trevor Pendleton claiming that despite his high social standing, those at the court know little about him. He's also mocked for his origins, although his skills are renowned by the City Watch. Two years into the rat plague afflicting Dunwall, Corvo is sent on a journey across the Isles of the Empress to find a cure, on recommendation of Spymaster Hiram Burroughs. On the 18th day of the month of Earth, he returns to Dunwall Tower two days early, bringing bad news and the intention of other nations to blockade the capital while the plague is spreading. His reunion with the Empress and her daughter is cut short when a group of assassins swarms them. Corvo is forced to watch as Dowd murders Jessamine and kidnaps Emily. In her last moments, Jessamine begs Corvo to find their daughter and protect her. Before Corvo regains his senses, the spy master and high overseer Thaddeus Campbell arrive on scene and arrest him on the grounds of regicide and abducting the royal heir. Corvo spends six months on Coleridge pl- prison, accused, tortured by his accusers, the true culprits behind the Empress's assassinations. Burroughs, who was elected Lord Regent by the Parliament, decides to execute Corvo, despite not forcing a false confession out of the latter. On the day of execution, Corvo escapes Coleridge with the help of the Loyalists, a group claiming to be faithful to the Empress. They bring him to their hideout at the Houndpits pub and reveal their plans, to destabilize the new regime by striking at the Lord Regent and his allies find Emily, and restore her throne to the throne of the Empire. He's given tools and a mask created by Piero Joplin to assist him in his missions while concealing his identity. As though no one's going to know that it's him. On the night of his arrival, Corvo is visited by the outsider in a dream, granted his mark and gifted supernatural abilities. Corvo becomes a valuable tool to the loyalist in removing Burroughs' religious, political, and financial allies. He even abducts royal physician Anton Sokolov to discover the identity of the Lord Regent's mistress, who finances the City Watch. Finally, he strikes at Burroughs himself in Dunwall Tower. But his victory is short-lived, spoilers, as the Loyalists betray him to cover their participation in the conspiracy. He's left for dead in the flooded district, where he encounters Dowd and his men once again. After another visit from the Outsider, Corvo escapes the assassin and returns to the Hound Pits. He finds it swarmed by forces of the City Watch looking for survivors Anton Sokolov and Piero Joplin and finds most of his former allies dead. Corvo there finds a clue on Emily's whereabouts. He ventures to King Sparrow Island to confront his betrayers and rescue his daughter once and for all. Whether he see, succeeds in saving Dunwall and restoring Emily to the throne is dependent on amassed chaos. Canonically, Corvo successfully saves Emily and restores her to the throne as Empress. Fifteen years after rescuing Emily and bringing an end to the Lord Regent's insurrection, Corvo has been cleared of the charges against him and continues to serve the new Empress as a royal protector and spymaster. A new threat arises with the elimination of political enemies by an assassin coined the Crown Killer. This brews suspicion among the citizens of Dunwall as to whether Corvo or Emily are directly responsible for the murders themselves. On the Empress of Jessamine's death, Duke Luca Abel and formally introduces Delilah Caldwin, elder sister of Jessamine and the true empress. Delilah then brands Corvo and Emily traitors for their supposed political assassinations and seizes the throne for herself. Corvo fights their forces, using his bend time ability and his sword to take out three of the guards and stab Delilah. Delilah, however, turns out to be immortal and proceeds to ensnare him and steals his mark from the outsider. She then proceeds to petrify either Corvo or Emily and arresting the other. If Corvo is chosen... He's, he will return to his home country of Sarkanos in the capital of Karnaka to restore Emily to the throne. Canonically, it was Corvo who was placed in stone by Delilah and later saved by Emily, thus permanently losing the mark. Known for his air of mystery, Corvo is a distant and reserved man, showing his emotions to only his closest companions. He is notably pragmatic, willing to exact whatever means necessary to achieve a desired end. Although he bears a title of utmost honor, he isn't opposed to wet work. Being conversely being completely apathetic to the spilling of blood. His willpower is unshakable, and his conviction absolute. Even with his name sh- slandered twice, in both cases, he seeks primarily the restoration of the Caldwin lineage to the throne. Corvo is legendary for his efficient combat skills and stealth abilities. His aptitude is revered by the City Watch guards and citizens alike. 
Since a young age, Corvo grew up fighting in the streets, where he gradually grew into a capable combatant. Later, he served in the soldier in the Grand Zirconian Guard, his skills increasing significantly during his tenure. Guards in the Dunwall sewer can be overheard discussing his formidable skills, with a senior guard recounting an instance where he saw Corvo fight three to one in the practice yard. Havelock also considers the possibility that Corvo's talents might make him dangerous even to the conspiracy. Highly proficient in stealth, he is able to silently infiltrate heavily guarded locations, utilizing hiding spots including corners, tables, or rooftops. From a far distance, he's even able to use the saddles in order to avoid detection. He's adept in eavesdropping and pickpocketing. As an accomplished swordsman, Corvo is masterful in the use of swords, and thus is capable of engaging multiple enemies simultaneously in open combat, able to eliminate them with noteworthy brutality and efficiency. He's a skilled marksman, wielding with great precision and accuracy several firearms, notably pistols and a personal crossbow. A talented freerunner, Corvo is able to traverse the obstacles of urban terrain with ease, his agility, speed, and athleticism aiding him greatly in reaching high-scale areas and destination. He has proven to be an experienced swimmer, capable of swimming great distances and holding his breath underwater for a considerable period of time. Corvo is equipped with a vast array of gadgetry, ranging from grenades to spring razors, to rewire tools for deactivating alarms, pog pylons, and walls of light. The majority of his equipment has been handcrafted by Pietro Joplin, most notably his mask, which possesses an embedded telescopic optical, optical lens, allowing Corvo to gain a clearer view of his surroundings. Upon receiving the outsider's mark, Corvo has bestowed supernatural abilities, which augment his already impressive skills, allowing him to jump higher, move further and faster, utilize additional stealth and offensive techniques, and so on. Additionally, he's gifted the Heart, a supernatural artifact responsible for locating items of interest and granting Corvo worldly information. While being a silent protagonist in Dishonored, in Dishonored 2, Corvo is voiced by Stephen Russell, who is most well-known for his role as Garrett in the original Thief franchise. Corvo means crow or raven in both Italian and Portuguese. Deriving from the Latin word for raven, Corvus, Corvo's skin tone was based off of that of Raphael Colantonio. Corvo is the first royal protector to be born outside of Gristol. Corvo's true identity are largely unknown outside of the Loyalist conspiracy. The authorities don't realize that Corvo and the mast fell under the same man. However, Slackjaw hints that Corvo's true identity is known among the lower classes, stating that word is all over the street when he is counted in Granny Rag's lair. After escaping from Coldridge Prison, wanted posters for Corvo's capture or death can be found all over Dunwall, with a reward of 30,000 coin. Others will appear after uh, completing specific missions and killing the target, but will only designate his masked identity. If Corvo caused low chaos, they will simply depict an unknown assailant. However, in high chaos, they will depict Corvo as the masked felon with his hood and mask. Another poster for Corvo's capture can be found in the mission Eminent Domain in the downloadable content Knife of Dunwall, where the price for his capture has been increased to 50,000 coins. It does not reappear in the next mission in DLC, as opposed to the first version with a 30,000 coins seen in the Dead Eels. Corvo and the Empress occasionally enjoyed whiskey and cigars together privately. Corvo enjoys grilled blood oxen. Corvo was meant to receive an official naval commendation for his efforts for seeking aid for the plague crisis, but it was confiscated after his arrest. It can be stolen and sold by Dowd and the Brigmore Witches. Corvo's birth home can be visited during the Dust District Mission, where his Blade of Bonnet Trophy can be found alongside his mother's personal diary. A commemorative plaque has been erected outside the house. After the mission, Royal Physician in Low Chaos, Emily gives Corvo a drawing of him without his mask, with the word Daddy written in large letters above it. In the Dishonored trailer, Corvo is shown being marked by the outsider before his escape from Coldridge Prison. In Medium Chaos, Corvo is sometimes referred to as the Dunwall Butcher among played survivors. Choosing to spare Dowd in the Mission Flooded District was one of the most hardest things Corvo had ever done taking all of his willpower not to kill Dowd outright, but to banish him instead. Corvo was never sure he made the correct decision, but thinks Dowd living in fear is perhaps worse than being dead. 
according to Game Informer, Corvo is six foot four. This has not been confirmed by Arcane Studios as being canonical. And then there's a bunch of pictures. <laughs> I do love Emily's drawings. Then the wanted posters, the concept arts and renders. Actually, let's read his abilities next. Outsider's Mark. The Outsider's Mark is a special brand granted by the Outsider to individuals of his choosing, which gives them access and resistance to an array of supernatural abilities. The Mark is given without a regard for merit to individuals who have piqued the Outsider's interest. Bearers of the Mark can use runes to strengthen the power and gain new abilities. The Outsider places no condition on Mark individuals, allowing them to use their powers as they see fit. He will, however, occasionally direct Mark's individuals towards certain actions, such as when he gave Dowd the name Delilah and challenged him to solve its mystery. In the Knife of Dunwall, which takes place during the events of Dishonored between the months of High Cold and Hearths of 1837, the Outsider tells Dowd that only eight people in the world currently bear his mark. Zukov was not marked by the Outsider, and said he carved the mark into his hand himself with the same knife with the same knife used to sacrifice the young man who became the outsider. His powers are unrelated to the mark. During the knife of Dunwall, Corvo is included in the eight people mentioned by the outsider, despite him not receiving the mark until later. There appears to this has been acknowledged by as an error by the developers. There's probably a earlier version of the game where Corvo gets the mark in Coleridge, considering that there's also a trailer where that happens there appears to be some discomfort associated with receiving the outsider's mark with a lonely rat boy the hand bearing the mark began to itch while emily described it as burning from the inside in dishonor the corroded man a mark the mark on corvo's hand is described as burning or tingling with the electricity of the void a feeling that intensifies the more corvo uses his powers when their supernatural abilities are used the marks on the hand of Corvo, Dowd, and Emily glow for a brief moment. In Dishonored, Corvo's mark glows a bright yellowish-orange glow with a similar colored smoke when his powers are in use. Dowd's mark is a darker orange corresponding with smoke while his powers are in use. In Dishonored 2, Emily's mark glow blue with blue smoke while Corvo's go glows white and emits white smoke. If Corvo is chosen as the protagonist and marked for the second time, his mark will glow blue like Emily's but without any smoke. The glow of Dowd's mark glows brighter or dimmer based on the proximity of runes and bone charms when his void gaze is employed. In Dishonored, after Corvo and Dowd switch powers, their marks also glow in smoke. Marked individuals can see the glow when activated on other marked individuals. Whether or not those so marked can see this effect is unknown. While Delilah claims to bear an outsider's mark on her hand, one is not visible. Those who are marked have increased vitality and can stay healthy longer than the average person. Citation needed. There exists a secret cult in which members brand themselves with a replica of the outsider's mark. People who are not bestowed the mark by the order can still learn supernatural abilities by those who are, but only in cases where the mark bearer has the power to pass it on. This is the case with Dowd's Gang of Assassins, Granny Rag's apprentice, Maura Sullivan, and Delilah's Coven of Witches. The extent of these abilities varies from one individual to another. The mark was designed by the artist Charles Bay. Originally, a tricycle was employed, as it referenced the circle of life. Three interlocking forms represent a bear's killer instinct and their ability to be unseen. The mark then evolved to be representing of something to represent the bear's killer instinct and their ability to be unseen. In Death of the Outsider, the mark is revealed to be the Outsider's real name, written in only a language the dead can read. If Billy Lurk decides to spare the Outsider, the spirit of Dowd whispers the name to her, and the Outsider's return to the land of the living. Whether the mark itself has any power after this event is unknown. And then there's a bunch of gifts of it, and pictures, and the symbol. So 
Sorry, just a moment. Bone charms or bone charms are mystical objects created with the bones of whales, humans, or other animals, each with a unique effect on the user's constitution and abilities. Gorvo Tano, Dowd, Emily Caldwin, and Billy Lurk can discover these items throughout the Empire and use them to complement their mission strategies. In the days before the Empire, ownerships of bone charms, including those waiting from the tusks of walruses and tivia, was tolerated, as their effects were said to improve the lives of lowly serfs and prevent pregnancies. However, with the coming of the Industrial Revolution arising from Edmund Roseborough's research on whale oil, the Abbey of the Everyman banned the use of bone charms, dubbing them witchery. Retaining bone charms is now a criminal offense, and there's a workshop at the Office of the High Overseer dedicated solely to the discretion of to the destruction of bone charms. While they are equipped, bone charms provide a variety of enhancements, such as improving the effects of elixirs and remedies, swimming speed, jumping ability, equipment, and strengthening the user's supernatural powers. Other bone charms have functions that exist but do not affect gameplay, but none of these can be found in the Dishonored franchise. Charms and effects. Dishonored. Acrobat. Slightly faster climbing. Albinos. Slightly increased chance of white rats. Blood Ox Heart. 20% increase to maximum mana. Garion Killer. Killing ran- rats grants some adrenaline. Clockwork Malfunction. Enemy grenades take slightly more time to explode. Falling Star. Drop Assassinating recharges mana by 20%. Fleet Fighter. Drawn weapons do not slow movement speed. Healthy Appetite 1. Food heals slightly more. Healthy Appetite 2. Food heals moderately more. Plague Affinity. Damage by Weepers grants a small amount of mana. Plague Resistant. Weepers inflict slightly less damage. Rat Scent. Rats attack only when approaching close proximity. Reinforced Bolts. Bolts suck in enemies break less often. Robust 1 and 2. Potions grant 5 and 10% more health. Scavenger. 50% chance to receive extra ammo from pickups. Spirited 1 and 2. Potions grant 5 and 10% more mana. Spiritual Pool. Slightly faster mana regeneration. Spirit Water. Drinking from faucets recharges mana by 20%. Strong Arms. Faster choking speed. Sustained Rage. Adrenaline takes slightly longer to cool down. Swift Shadow. Increased movement speed in stealth mode. Throwing Hand. Thrown objects travel slightly farther. Tough Skin. 15% 15% increase to maximum health. Twist of Fortune. Very rarely, using a potion grants full mana. Twist of Fortune 2. Sometimes, using a potion grants full mana. Undertaker. Increased movement speed while carrying a corpse. Unnerving target 1 and 2. Enemies have a slight and moderate chance to miss with guns. Vengeance. Being damaged grants a small amount of adrenaline. Water of Life. Drinking from a fountain grants 7.5% health. Welcoming Host. Possession lasts 30 seconds while on rats, normally 20. Whirlwind 1 and 2. Swing speed for swords is slightly and moderately faster. The beer taps in the Hound Pits pub, and the drink taps at the Boyle Mansion count as faucets. Void Walker's Arsenal. These appear in Corvo's room at the Hound Pub and the Hound Pits pub after meeting the outsider with the purchase of the pre-order or DLC. Acrobatic Killer Raven. Drop assassinations give you a bit of health. Acrobatic Killer River Affinity. Swim speed increases slightly. Acrobatic Killer Quick Dodge. Enemies miss more with arrows and bolts. Arcane Assassin. Gutter Feast. Eating white rats restores 5% mana. Arcane Assassin. Void Channel. Minus 20% increased duration for powers. Increased range for blink. And wind blast. Arcane Assassin. White Rat Friend. White Rats won't attack you. Backstreet Butcher. Blast Resistant. Damage from Explosion reduced slightly. Backstreet Butcher. Fencer. Advantage in Sword versus Sword Combat. Backstreet Butcher. Fire Water. Increased Explosion Range for Whiskey Bottles. Shadow Rat. Good Lungs. Breath Capacity and Water Increase Slightly. Shadow Rat. Delicate Touch. The Breaking Glass Sound is Moderately Reduced. Shadow Rat. Voyeur. 
magnification of sight while peeping through keyholes. In the Knife of Dunwall DLC, some bone charms have been removed, and all remaining bone charms that pre previously had two levels now have the upgraded effect right away. Some of the former bone charms have been renamed in Adden, and a few entirely new bone charms also appear. Bird of Prey. Drop assassinations give doubt a bit of health. Hardy Crew. Summoned assassins deal more damage. Light as a shadow. Take less damage from falls. Overpowering. Very easily win contested interactions. Let me see. Swift Shadow. Increased movement speed in stealth mode. Swift Stalker. If Dad's weapons are sheathed, his speed is boosted. Tough Skin. 15% increase to maximum health. Undertaker. Increased movement speed while carrying a corpse. Two new bone charms appear in the Brigmore Witch's DLC. Submariner. Regain health while submerged in water. Void Surge. Sometimes, when using a power, no mana will be spent. In Dishonored 2, most of the old bone charms will appear, though many have been changed in name or exact function. In addition, bone charms fall under different categories, making crafting easier. Enduring allies summon doppelgangers last longer. Resilient allies summon doppelgangers have more health. Restorative glimmer health regenerates while using dark vision. Shadow embrace. Shadow walk lasts slightly longer. Submerged rage. Gain adrenaline while underwater. Synergic swarm. Summon rat swarms persist longer. Vengeance. Taking melee damage from an enemy generates adrenaline. Void rapture. Sometimes enemies are rendered unconscious by mesmerize. Ground glider. Slide speed is slightly faster. Agile recovery. Recover from fall is slightly quicker. Aquatic nature. Swim speed is slightly faster. Leviathan's mind. Regenerate mana while underwater. Strong lungs. Greater lung capacity underwater. Assassin's Fortune. Bolt packs have a slight chance of containing plus one crossbow bolt. Blade Ballet. Your spring razors have a slight chance of illuminating a body. Combustion. Your grenades inflict slightly more damage. Duelist's Luck. Bullet packs now have a slight chance of containing plus one pistol bullet. Fire Starter. Incendiary bullet radius is slightly larger. Electric Boost. Increases the area for stun mines. Hot Cocktail. Exploding barrels inflict damage over a wider area. Lucky Needle. Slight chance to recover sleep darts. Resounding shriek. Howling bolts are louder and have a greater radius. Tricky timing. Enemy grenades take slightly longer to explode. Unfortunate craftsmanship. Enemy grenades sometimes malfunction. Unnerving target. Enemies sometimes drop grenades and throw debris at their feet. Unsteady hand. Enemies miss with fired projectiles more often. Bird of prey. Drop assassination restores some health. Duelist cell. Your bullets inflict slightly more damage. Exacting aim. Your crossbow bullets inflict slightly more damage. Fencer. When lock sword contents easily, contests easily. Deep grave. Slight chance that grave hounds are destroyed upon spawning. Relocation sickness. Witches sometimes stumble off balance after magical relocation. Bitter blood. Blood flies attack at slightly slower distances, closer to nests. Blood sacrifice. Killing blood flies or rats restores health. Carrion killer. Killing rats or blood flies boosts adrenaline. Gutter feast. Right, white rats can be eaten for mana. Spiritual sacrifice. Killing blood flies or rats restores mana. Duelist luck and du void favor can only be obtained from the Imperial Assassin pack. Death of the Outsider. There aren't any new ones. Corrupted Charms. Introduced in the Brigmore Witches, Corrupted Charms are bone charms with powerful beneficial effects counterbalanced by embedded penalties. They are created by breaking apart 
functional bone charms and fusing them back together with additional pieces of whalebone. Leverage. Pull power, distance, and speed are increased. But mana cost for pull power is increased. Power slash. Dao deals great damage with his sword. He swings his sword slower. Shivering silhouette. Enemies have a high chance to risk misranged attacks. But doubt is more visible to enemies. Splintering bolts. Bolt shot by Rispo do more damage. Bolts always shot when bolts always break when shot at enemies. Statuesque. Doubt will not be spotted by enemies while standing still, unless in combat. But mana does not regenerate. Tank. Damage taken is reduced, but so is overall movement speed. Vengeance. Build up adrenaline faster, but adrenaline takes less time to cool down. Witch skin. When taking damage, Dowd's mana is drained before his health, but mana does not regenerate. Zephyr. Overall movement speed is increased, but damage taken is increased. Dishonored 2. Armored bones. You take less damage, but your movement speed is reduced. Bright moon. Your doppelganger, your doppelganger inflicts more damage, but lasts half as long. Clumsy assassin. Brief invisibility after choking or assassinating an enemy, but you're louder when making noise and more visible when leaning. High pressure. Explosions from grenades, oil tanks, and bottles inflict more damage. But grenades, oil tanks, and bottles have a smaller blast radius. Lightweight. You take less damage when falling, but your health generation is halved. Risky parry. During melee combat, your sword parry always knocks an enemy down, but you take damage when parrying. Stolen breath. Pulling enemies towards you with far reach is now stealthy and quiet, but it consumes more mana for uses. Vengeance trade. Faster adrenaline accumulation, but reduced bloodlust duration. Void winds. When you cast wind blast, it's more powerful, but consumes more mana. Zephyr. Your speed is increased when rocking or running, but you take more damage. Death of the Outsider. Cursed Gaze. Targets marked with Foresight have reduced health. Only one target at a time can be reduced by Foresight. Dark Energy. At full Void Energy, you move faster, make less noise, and deal less damage. Deal more damage. At less than full Void Energy, you move slower, make more noise, and deal less damage. Discrete Swap. Brief invisibility after moving with displace, but displace distance is reduced. Leapfrog. Displace costs no void energy if he is close to an unaware character, but displaced in inner penetration will always kill you. Let me see here. Black bone charms. Black bone charms were introduced in Dishonored 2. They are bone charms with more powerful unique traits than standard, which cannot be learned or used to create custom charms. They do not have any negative traits, unlike corrupted charms. Sacrificing them yields four raw whalebone, more than other charms. Some of these bone charms were in Dishonored as normal charms. Bloodfly Alchemy. Your enemies, an enemy's initial attack range is transformed to bloodflies. Cornered animal. Your attack damage increases when your health is low. Dark Extraction. Shadow Walk Assassination restores some health. Expansive Spirit. Max mana is increased. Fading Light. Far Reach and Blink consume no mana used within a second of assassination. Familiar Scent. Wolfhounds cannot smell you. Fickle Beasts. White Wolfhounds fight on your side. Hardiness. Maximum health is increased. Invisible Thread. Far Reach renders you invisible during movement. Iron Roots. Knockdowns are less likely to affect you. Beach Cuts. You gain health when inflicting sword damage or assassinating enemies. Leviathan's Breath. Running out of breath reduces mana before health. Life Bond. When you heal yourself, your summoned doppelgangers are also healed. Lucky Jam. Enemy pistols have a better chance of misfiring. Mind Runner. Your possessed human host can sprint. Separation Trauma. Enemies are rendered unconscious when you leave your host. Shadow Repose. Regain health during Shadow Walk. Solid Landing. Falling from a significant height creates a shock pact on 
impact. Shockwave on impact. Affecting nearby enemies and objects. Twin leech. Regain health while doppelganger is active. Undying swarm. Rat swarms repopulate over time. Void armor. When you take damage, a significant portion is subtracted from mana. Death of the Outsider. Blink Eye. Targets marked by Foresight have reduced perception. Cornered Animal. Your attack damage increased when your health is low. Distracting Visit. When using Displace, an alternate Billy appears at your previous location, distracting enemies. Forceful Throw. Hurl enemies. Hurl objects with greater force. Greater Foresight. Allows you to select and mark more objects with Foresight. Iron Roots. Knockdowns are less likely to affect you. Lasting Strike. If an enemy is vulnerable or near death, Void Strike will render them unconscious. Mobile Mimicry. Semblance drains less void energy. Perfect Balance. Maintain your balance after Displace Inner Penetration and sustain only half damage. Quiet Hook. Hook targets are silenced in midair. Rapid Displacement. Use Displace without placing a marker. Reflexes. Block to deflect projectiles. Snap Reaction. Quick reflexes seem to slow time when an enemy spots you. Solid landing. I read that one. Strike dilation. Briefly slow time when using void strike against an enemy. Tactical mimicry. Holy moly. Actually, that isn't so bad. Void conduit. Gain an additional portion of void energy. Corroded bone charms were introduced in Dishonor the Corroded Man. These charms grant more powers than regular ones, but drain the life force out of their users. They are also unstable, eventually corroding themselves out over time by three repeated uses. Zukov crafts them, but due to many due to their instability requires many due to their instability. They are small enough to fit inside a person's palm, octagonal, and crafted out of copper wire and bone. When used, they burn with a red and orange glow, and eventually char themselves to the point of disintegration. Drawing too much power from them might even set the uses on fire. Known effects granted by the corroded bone charms include a movement power that allows a user to transpose with his own reflection, then moving from one reflective surface to another. If the reflection is imperfect or fractured, this power would fracture the user himself. Zukov can share the bone charms power with Gelia Fleet, though the power she, see, re, she received is similar to Whaler's transversal. Generating an aura, disorienting anyone around its user, sometimes causing nausea, blackout, or even hallucinations. The user has some degree of control, as he can focus the effect on a particular person, amplifying it. Next is the locations. I'm going to skip those. Also, how to craft them, but I don't really need those. Trivia. Starting in Dishonor, the corrupted man, corroded man. Bone charms are called bone charms. No space. Bone charms in Dishonored are made from two bones, suggesting two traits. Bone charms in Dishonored 2 are made from a single bone, suggesting a single trait. Bone charms found in Dishonored 2 appear to be weaker in Dishonored, excluding the corrupted and black bone charms. The traits can be amplified with trait synergy to make stronger variants. With some skill, any person can make bone charms. This is a rather lengthy procedure, as opposed to the instant crafting available through bone charm crafting. It's revealed in Death of the Outsider there are turned out to the bone charms called ointments. Notably, one of them is the Scarlet Nightshade ointment, which render a wearer a hardened skin and a numbness throughout the body and stiff movement. Each playthrough of Dishonored spawns only 26 random bone charms out of 35 available. Grovo starts with three slots in which to equip bone charms, but can purchase more from Piero Droplin at the Chahalan Pub's pit. Bone charm capacity can be increased to a maximum of 10 by upgrades. By upgrades, the fish statue in the Acrobatic Killer Pack, the whale statue in the Arcane Assassin Pack, the wolfhound statue in the Backstreet Butcher Pack, and the rat statue in the Shadow Rat Pack. Bone charms spawn randomly. They are chosen when the level is loaded, so reloading right before obtaining one will always yield the same charm. Notable exceptions to this occur. The bone charm is stuck in the vice in the backyard. Saving before collecting the charm will allow one to reset until the desired one is spawned. This effect is very useful when attempting a ghost, low chaos, or clean hands playthrough, as the strong arms bone charm is a tremendous help. The bone charm Krovo gets from Dowd in the flooded district. 
either through pickpocketing him or by defeating him and looting his body. It's much harder to pickpocket if undetected, but it's easier to manage with bend time and blink. The bone charm found on top of a rock near Swarm of Plague Rats, right after ending the tunnel leading down its base. The bone charm Dowd can purchase in Jero- by, from Jerome and Draper's Ward. In Dishonored, collecting ten bone charms will unlock the occultist achievement. In Dishonored 2, an achievement called Occult Carver can be attained through crafting ten bone charms. Emily and Corvo cannot collect bone charms relating solely to the other's abilities, e.g. Corvo cannot obtain life bond, while Emily cannot find accommodating host unless playing on New Game Plus. Through the New Game Plus feature of Dishonored 2, trade synergy can be used five times on strong arms to allow immediate choking. Enemies rendered unconscious by separation trauma do not count as knockouts on the statistics page. Whether Undying Swarm works does not depend on whether it is equipped, rather it depends on whether it was equipped at the time the swarm was summoned. If a level 2 bone charm is collected when the level 1 variant is equipped, the level 2 is automatically equipped. Billy once knew a person who claimed to have a bone charm that deflected bullets. He shot himself in the stomach and died a day after. Dowd Bones bought a corrupted bone charm that caused shark metal to break on contact with him, but each time it worked, he, oh, one of his teeth turned black and fell out. He gave it to a whaler who later lost all of his teeth. When purchased from black market shops, black charms cost 350 coins, and corrupted charms cost 250 coins. According to Zukov, there are reservoirs of power inside bones, which is the prerequisite of bone charm crafting. Frozen bones are useless because of the matrix of ice crystals penetrate to the bones, disrupting the reservoirs of power. In Death of the Outsider, members of the cult of the Outsider use powers granted by black bone charms in combat. Those equipped with w- agility, whirlwind, bloodthirsty reflexes, and power slash bone charms have access to the same or similar powers manifested in Billy. Cultists with hardiness, snap reaction, and iron roots bone charms don't seem to have any special ability. When Billy loots a bone charm she already possesses, it'll be converted to raw whalebone. Then there's a bunch of concept art. And that's the end of it for a little bit. I totally didn't intend to spend half of this reading about bone charms. Excuse me. I think I'll be back, though. I had a fun time reading this. Until then, I leave you. Alfred.